Hello, I'm Arvind. I'm part of the marketing team. So actually we wanted to do specifically about uh, CRM, but then we thought that, yeah, let's cover all the, the gamut of uh, connectors that we have for many of the apps. So this is going to be my agenda today. Uh, I'm going to cover an introduction to all the app connectors that we have. Uh, in sales, there is uh, Zoho CRM and uh, Salesforce. In web marketing, that's Google Analytics. Then operations, we have Service Desk Plus, uh, which is our uh, sister managed engines product, and also Zendesk. And finally, a general uh, data set. So these are the different uh, connectors that we have in Zoho reports. So uh, data from, say, files and feeds, which is like, say, it can be Excel files, CSV files, or it can be XML or JSON feeds. All that can be brought in. And there are a lot of Zoho applications as well uh, from where data can be fetched. Uh, databases, of course, so MySQL, Oracle, SQL Server, you name it, we have it. Finally, the applications, which is our, uh, the subject of this presentation. So we have many applications from Salesforce to Box to Google Drive to Microsoft OneDrive to whatnot. So what are the advantages in having these connectors? They're all, all ready-made. So you get a ready-made BI tool integrated with uh, your application, whatever you are using. It's all seamless. And uh, that is, it's like mostly its reports is integrated with the application that you have. And then all the data is auto-synced. So there is a sync period. So typically, it, it is like multiple times a day, data can sync with, uh, from your application to Zoho reports. And the fourth point is we offer pre-built reports and dashboards for all these connectors. So we offer a set of uh, reports, say typically it can range from 50 to 100 reports per connector. Uh, not just that, so you, it allows you to do ad hoc analysis as well, meaning you can create uh, your own reports on other than the, uh, the pre-built ones that we offer. And finally, the cross-functional analytics. So suppose you have, say, Google Analytics data coming in, so you can have your, uh, say, another spreadsheet or another uh, uh, database data coming in into the same database, and you can analyze data together. So because we have that, uh, say, joining of tables feature. So, so let's get into sales. So these are the, some of, uh, I'm going to go through some of the reports offered uh, in these uh, subsections. Let's see if first the sales pipeline analytics. Uh, Typical uh, sales funnel looks like this. There is a qualification stage and there is a closed one stage. In between, there are various stages. Then uh, you get a nice report uh, letting you know how many uh, prospects are there in whatever stages they are. So you, can, you have a, uh, a couple of user filters at the top. Uh, you can say, Filter by time, it can be last six months, last three months, or, or for the year. And then you, can ha you have the potential owner as well, the sales rep. So you can see by sales rep how their sales funnel looks like at any point of time. Uh, going to the stage history analysis, uh, we have number of potentials uh, in each stage of the month. So it's like, for in, in, in this report, we have from January to June of 2014, uh, the various, uh, uh, the number of, uh, it's like the funnel that you saw, multiple funnels actually. So it's like shows for each of the month, how many uh, potentials are there in uh, each of the stages. Uh, this is an interesting report. Uh, this shows both the velocity and the stage duration, average uh, velocity and average stage duration. So average stage duration is the average period of time uh, lead spends in a particular stage. So that gives you the average stage duration. And then we have average stage velocity, which is the time taken for your, uh, your prospect to reach a particular stage. So we show that in a report, which will be of uh, use to you. So you can see if in any particular uh, stage, 
contributes to a uh, lot of time or less time so you can you can uh, act upon that then we have salesperson analytics here you get to know the salesperson's uh, performance you have uh, top 5 and also the bottom 5 performing sales reps depending upon the revenue that they got and also if you want you can have the win rate as well so how many uh, deals that they have won versus the total number of deals that is the deals won plus deals lost that's that gives you the win rate uh the third metric by which a sales person is uh, typically evaluated is the average deal size so what is the average deal size that a sales person uh, brings in so it's just divide the number of the revenue brought by the number of deals won you get the average deal size uh we offer some predictive analysis as well so how your sales is going to be for the say the next 3 months and how how much of that is going to be new sales so for that we have some formula like this where we calculate based on the past and then multiply it by the next uh, the number of open potentials that you have for the next 90 days that is for the 3 months and similarly for the new business you again calculate the number of new potentials that have been created for the last uh, 90 days we end up getting uh, the predicted new business for the next 3 months moving on so let's see uh, the web marketing uh, report some of the web marketing reports that we have so it is typically from uh, the google analytics data uh, page tracking is all about the pages that you have in your website the landing pages uh, and the subsequent pages so this report for example shows the top pages that have got the maximum number of organic searches say from a search engine like google so from here you know that a page a mountain iphone bikes performs the best followed by all the other pages and then you can also see the bottom performing pages as well so you reverse it and then you get a bottom uh, performing pages and then you can do some seo or you can uh, revise the content based on the report so this chart shows the bounce rate and the uh, plotted against the sessions so it's it's a daily chart for february so it can be you can typically metrics are analyzed either daily or monthly so in this case is a monthly chart you see the bounce rate across uh, for the last 3 months and then you can choose the landing page at the top and see for each particular landing page what the bounce rate has been so actually it's like the bounce rate is given every day so it, we actually see it for a month it's all summed up and an average is calculated and shown for a month uh, next would be geo analytics where uh, each of your uh, web pages are uh, analyzed according to the web uh, the geo location uh, here too we have uh, subsections like you can drill down to a subcontinent a country a city so you can see uh, what are the or, or the, here it is percentage exit it can be say unique uh, page views or sessions or number of users uh, who are is coming in from a particular city or how a, a country is contributing traffic all that you can analyze so this pivot actually shows the metrics for the top cities that have driven traffic in the last 30 days then we have like so like cities we have top kind of 10 countries as well so google web analytics actually allows you to map the adwords data if you are advertising in adwords to your google analytics account so we provide some uh, uh, reports on top of uh, adwords uh, campaign as well so here is one so this this gives you the cpc which is cost per click uh, again you can drill down to a particular campaign so you can choose the campaign for which you want to know the uh, cost per click how it has performed uh, for the last few months or you can go to the again from campaign to the ad group to the url level so how each have performed what is the cost per click for each of these properties 
Then we have uh, CTR, which is uh, click-through rate. Uh, it's, it's the number of clicks got divided by the number of impressions an ad is served. So here we have, the again, the same uh, user filters at the top. Again, you can drill down to a campaign or ad group or a destination URL. See the CTR. Moving on, it's, uh, the next would be the help desk uh, analytics. These are two products that we provide help desk analytics on. So again, here it's subdivided into SLA reports, analytics reports, and uh, technicians or agent uh, analytics reports. Uh, in SLA analytics, we provide, like, say, the first response time, how, how quick your uh, support reps have been in um, responding to calls. So in this report, you can see that, okay, in January uh, end, we started somewhat with a very high response time. And then some corrective action had been taken, and it has dropped down to, say, 14 hours. So it shows the trend. So this is the SLA deviation report. So as Anand explained in this uh, previous presentation, we can have thresholds set. Uh, here we have values like, say, for critical, it's just 6 hours. For high, it's 12 hours. For medium, it's 24. And low, it's 48. So you get to see that how, how each of the uh, priority requests, what is the number of uh, each of them, the, the average time elapsed in hours for uh, each of these uh, priority requests. Is SLA violated by category? Again, here we can have different categories and uh, the violation, SLA violations that have happened for each of the categories. This is from, uh, from a department point of view. For which of the departments the SLAs have been violated? After the SLA reports, it's the agent analytics or the technician analytics. Here you see that uh, how the workload has been for uh, the different agents, uh, the different support reps, how many tickets they have handled, what is the number of unresolved tickets that they have, uh, the, the, the solved tickets that, that's within the SLA limit, whether they have solved it in time, and, and also the overdue requests that they have not closed. And we have time spent by the technicians in each of the different uh, ways or in a support. So typically it's by email or by phone call or by responding to web forms. So you can have uh, metrics on all these. Here too, like uh, we have the like salesperson, we, we here have the top five technicians by the number of requests close. Uh, finally, the, the last would be some general uh, thing, uh, general uh, US economic indicators, for example, which we plotted. So I will show you the blog that we made. We, we just compiled a set of uh, economic indicators for the US, and then uh, had a set of reports, like home ownership rate, how it has uh, trended over time, uh, the government bonds the interest rate, and then we compared these two, whether there is any correlation between these two, were there or not. And then uh, US international partners, who, what are the countries that U.S. had made, uh, uh, has the trade with. This is where you can find the post, which has got a lot many reports other than what we have shown. So that brings me to the summary. So the idea is to have any data analyzed with Zoho reports. So uh, it can be from the applications, databases, you, uh, we have a lot more connectors uh, to come, other than the ones uh, that I told about, and it's there in our uh, web pages. A lot of Zoho integrations that that are already there, and uh, that's about it. So, thank you.